Hey there, in this lesson, I'd like to add one more example. So let's duplicate the newly created artboard. This is artboard eight and nine. Let's create the transition between those artboards and let's use motion and edit the timeline. Now we have only one layer. That's simply because those two layers are linked. They, are, uh, they have the same name and there's no animation whatsoever. Let's move the playhead uh, to the artboard nine and let's reposition this element like so. Now let's preview this animation in 10% speed and also let's loop it so that you can see that the transition is actually slower at the beginning, then it speeds up and then it's slower at the end. And this is called easing and you can modify it. So you can modify easing for both the entire animation. So here is the entire animation. You can change the duration and also you can change the global easing, but you can modify the easing for each individual transition here. And let's click on the easing. The default setting is ease both. It means that it will slow down at the beginning, then speed up and slow down at the end. So if you imagine the values of this animation, well, basically we animate on the X axis. So you have, for example, animation from 50 to 500 pixel on, pixels on X axis. And this is the animation. This is the X animation. So we have uh, 50 here and uh, 500 here or 0% or and 100% here. And there we have the time of the animation. So it's going from zero seconds to 0.4 of a second here. So if you modify it right now so that we have something like this, you'll discover that we have almost all animation, say 80% of the animation finished in the first 10% of the time. So it will speed up in the beginning and then it will slow down at the end. So let's preview this animation. That's it. So it's fast at the beginning and then it slows down. Well, you can go even further and if you adjust it so that this line at the beginning is below the starting point so that we have starting point at, uh, for example, 50x and then we go back to 0x, then 50 again and uh, at the end we can even do the same. If you preview this animation, this oval will first go back and then forth and it will slow down like this. So yeah, you can apply some kind of weight to this object or you can select, for example, pop, which is kind of similar to that. And at the end of the animation, you will see that this oval is slightly offset and then it slows down and goes to the left. So you can use this pop easing, for example, for the buttons on your website. When someone hovers over the button, uh, he'll see a nice transition. Now, there's also one more thing I'd like to discuss in this lesson. And if you click on those arrows, you will see different properties that are being animated across the artboard. So for the oval, we have the animation of only the X property. But if we select it on the artboard nine and change, for example, the position, you'll see that we have the animation on the Y axis now. And if we change the size, you also have the width and height animating. There's not much more that you can do within the timeline, but if you go back to the artboard, now you can select this shape and you can change different properties such as fill or you can change the opacity to say 55%. And if you go back to the timeline, you'll see that all those properties now uh, appears here on the list. So we have opacity animation and also fill animation. And what's ni even nicer, you can adjust the easing separately for those properties. And even you can change the timing so that the ball is red and then it turns blue at the end, you can do so. Now this is it about the basics of animation in studio. Now let's apply those rules to our layout. I'll see you in the next lesson.